So by now we've all heard of the insane AI developed by the OpenAI team. ChatGPT took the world by a storm and now it's being used by over 13 million unique visitors every single day. Now it took a while for me to want to make this video because I really wanted to be able to experience using ChatGPT before giving my opinions on it. So um, I've been using it ever since it got released. Literally the day it got released, I started using it and I I cannot lie. I've been using it every single day. Like I haven't, it hasn't been a day that I haven't went into the website and talked to ChatGPT because it is extremely useful for a variety of situations. However, a specific kind of situation which I find ChatGPT to be excellent for is when you're trying to code a project. Now, I primarily use and code React, so I have a lot of experience now using ChatGPT um, to help me write React code. So that's why in this video, I'm going to be going over some different techniques and things you can do with ChatGPT in order to help you improve your React code. So the first thing that uh, I think ChatGPT is really useful, and I think you guys might guess this, is explaining concepts for you. Now, you can obviously Google uh, whenever you find a concept that you don't understand or a word that you you don't know what it means. You can easily Google it. However, the difference I find is that when you Google something, you can like your the search results are influenced by SEO, by how rankable the, the website is and how, also by ads, right? Because obviously Google has ads. So it's not always exactly what you want. And also you need to filter out by clicking on different websites, right? And that's that's just not as efficient as going to ChatGPT and directly asking it for uh, asking the whatever the concept you wanna learn, asking what it means, and it will give you a perfectly good answer. Now, what I've been doing is whenever I, um, I, I like to read documentation, right? I've said this in the past, I don't, I don't watch that many YouTube videos anymore when I'm learning a new technology because I find it better to look at documentation, but I know other people like watching YouTube videos. But when I'm looking at a documentation and I see a word or a function or something that I just can't, can't bring myself to understand, I just go to ChatGPT and ask it what it means. Now, what happens is if I wanted to, to change its answer so that I understand it better, I can do that very easily. An example would be the following. Imagine, for example, you're a beginner React dev and you're trying to understand what context API means. So you saw that word somewhere, you watched a YouTube video that mentioned that, but you don't really know what it means. So what you can do is just go to ChatGPT and literally just ask it, what is the context API? Then obviously ChatGPT will give you an answer. Maybe in the answer will include some sort of uh, implementation of it. But the thing is, uh, if you Google that, you would get this around the same thing or you get like a Medium article explaining what it is. However, with ChatGPT, if you're still confused with the answer, you can just ask it to write it in a more simple and more concise way and it will do that exactly for you. Now, what if there is a word in the explanation that you don't understand? Well, you can, it, it kind of reminds itself. It takes into account what you've been talking so far. So you can literally just go ahead and ask what does that word mean? and explain, like for example, in our case, if the word is context, right? Because context can make sense in different meanings. It has different meanings. So in the meaning of programming, you can just ask what it means and it will give you a complete explanation. And finally, obviously, if it didn't give you the implementation, you can directly ask for, um, for the code on how to write or use the context API. Thing is, um, if, you're, if your project is, if you're creating a project, right? And the project is, related to, uh, I don't know, it's a e-commerce website, right? And you wanna know a simple implementation for context API um, being used as uh, a provider for a cart system, a shopping cart system, right? You can ask ChatGPT to give you a, an example implementation of the context API with that specific context. And it will give you exactly that. When in Google, you would have to expect someone to do that for you before and publish into a, an article or something like that in order for you to find. So this is for me, a very clear benefit of using ChatGPT instead of go, going to Google and searching um, whatever you need, because it will generate answers that hasn't that don't necessarily have to have been written previously, which is the limit with Google. Okay, so I know that a lot of you guys know what Stack Overflow is, and it's been a staple in the industry for literally forever, right? It, it's helped uh, millions of developers throughout the years to help debug their codes or just help them in, in various different ways, but specifically it is mainly used for um, solving issues or debugging your code. Now, 
one of the main benefits of ChatGPT, in my view, is being able to recognize bugs and let you know what they are. Now, obviously, there is limits to this because ChatGPT won't know something that um, that it's like if you have a massive, massive uh, project, right? Like I don't know, hundred files, and you don't know where the bug is, then it's hard for ChatGPT to to know where where it is because you you would have to put all the files in, and that doesn't work with ChatGPT. But if you have a piece of code and you just don't understand what's wrong with it or what's causing that issue, not only can ChatGPT give you directly the fix, but if it is a little more complicated, it can also give you ideas on how to fix whatever you're having. I've done this. A billion times, literally. Whenever I run it, even recording my a video that I'm gonna post next week, uh, like yesterday, I was coding and I, I saw an error and I was really confused because it made no sense to me. And then I searched on Google and nothing appeared. I searched on Stack Overflow, nothing appeared. And then I asked to ChatGPT. ChatGPT gave me a list of possible fixes or possible problems that might be causing that. And in like no time, I was able to fix it. Right. So uh, a simple example of how you can do this um, is by literally just copying and pasting your code inside of the chat. So you can see right here in this example that I'm showing, um, I definitely I'm purposefully made a mistake in this code and I'm pasting it in ChatGPT. ChatGPT will let me know what the fix is. I can also ask ChatGPT to help me improve this code, but you should always keep in mind the um, it's 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 limits, right? Because ChatGPT only takes in data up to 2021. So um, if you're using conventions and syntax that is later than 2021, then obviously ChatGPT won't be able to help you with that. However, if I put this code, right? However, if I put this code, you saw that it gave me the solution. It basically fixed the problem for me. I can also go ahead and ask it to improve this code and it will give me whatever suggestions it has, which in my opinion, it's, it's nice. Even if you opt to not follow the suggestions, you don't have to do what ChatGPT is telling you. ChatGPT is not the voice of reason, but it is definitely a tool that can help you um, improve your code throughout this. Uh, it's kind of like a second eye, right? If you're working with a teammate, not always you will follow whatever they say, right? You shouldn't. Um, but it is another person that can give you some good insight on whatever you're coding. Now, this brings me to uh, something I really wanted to talk to you guys about, which is um, if you're watching one of my videos, especially this one over here, where I'm explaining to you guys some um, kind of like just going over how to do certain things, in this case would be how to communicate with ChatGPT. Um, and you want to memorize the steps towards it, um, you don't actually have to memorize everything, you don't have to even write it down manually. There's a really cool extension that I really wanted to show you guys, uh, which allows you to create simple step by step tutorials, uh, like automatically by just uh, moving your mouse and interacting with your computer. What I'm talking about is Scribe, it's, it's this extension over here, and they are sponsoring this video. But I actually find Scribe really, really cool because if you want to, for example, if you're watching my video and you want to remember how to, um, I don't know, search for uh, the context API, right, which is uh, one of the things I mentioned in this video, uh, you would click on the extension, it's completely free, click on start recording, then it says capture has started, then all you have to do is just do whatever you would do normally, and it will record your mouse clicks and create a step by step tutorial on that thing. So for example, I would come over here and say, what is the context API? And then it will uh, provide me with the information, right? So it recorded that I searched for that. Um, if I wanted to then um, make this be simpler and more concise, I'm just going to stop generating so we don't waste time. I could just come over here and say, uh, can you make this simpler and more concise? Right? I'm, I'm just creating the steps towards working with ChatGPT. Um, if I wanted to whatever, just like click on this button over here, right, and put uh, this, put a comment, this is nice, uh, and submit the feedback. I'm recording everything I'm doing. Uh, obviously, this isn't specifically what you would want to do. However, I'm just showing you as an example. If you're done with the tutorial, you could just click over here on the button to stop recording, then it will open another tab inside of your browser with uh, this new step by step, uh, like explanation of what you just did. And you can even give a name to it if you want to. Uh, but you can see it says navigate to this link, then click on this field, then uh, type, what is the context API press enter all of that steps that we actually took in order to um, uh, do whatever we just did. Now you can see the implications of this, right, that you can do this with 
many different things, not only with ChatGPT, obviously. An awesome example that I can think of is whenever you're deploying something, right? You're you're something that is that you do once in a while, but you always forget how to do it. You can just use Scribe to create something like that. I personally like to do it with things like um, setting up Firebase, maybe setting up um, Webpack, right? Maybe something related to AWS, you know, like stuff related to setup, they're really good to be used with Scribe. So uh, I just wanted to thank Scribe for sponsoring this video, uh, but I wanted to show you guys because this actually can have a lot of use cases in the programming world. Okay, everyone. So the last thing I really wanted to show you guys is that ChatGPT is able to straight up create projects for you guys. So what do I mean by that? Well, imagine you just want a simple project, right? Um, I find myself going through this a lot, like, especially because I make videos related to programming and I, I want to do a, a, a tutorial, but it, it takes a lot of time to write code, right? Um, especially when I'm, it's, there's basically no purpose in the code I'm writing other than just making a single video. Uh, that's why it takes forever to make long videos because um, I have to write all the code beforehand, right? So now with ChatGPT, what I can do is literally just tell ChatGPT what I want for it to build and it will give me a lot of the initial code. So for example, if I wanted ChatGPT to create for me a to-do list application in React, I could just simply ask for it to do that. Obviously, it will start out by just giving me the simplest version of a to-do list application, but you can actually improve what it's building by just telling it to do more stuff. For example, I just asked for it to uh, create a to-do list, right? Now, let me ask for it to use, um, I don't know, routes to create this application. Now it's going to use React Router DOM um, and it gives us the actual um, code with that. Um, what if we want to have some styling? I can actually like some really cool styling and I want to use something like um, Tailwind CSS. I can just straight up ask ChatGPT to create uh, the thing using Tailwind CSS. Like you can keep improving. And there is one thing you guys should know, ChatGPT, I don't know what the limit is, but there's a limit to how big the text can be. So if you ever run into the problem where it just stops midway through and um, doesn't show the rest of the code, you can just ask for it to continue writing the code that it was writing before directly from where it stopped and it will continue writing. So there's a lot you can do with this. Just just keep that in mind. There's a lot. Uh, I'm not saying write all your projects using ChatGPT because that's not what you should do. But you can actually skip a lot of annoying manual stuff by asking ChatGPT to do it for you. So this is basically it uh, for all the things that um, ChatGPT can help you with. However, now that we've gotten to the end of the video, I wanted to tell you guys um, some of the negatives from ChatGPT because I think it is extremely important for me to do this um, in order for you guys to really truly understand um, what you can and what you can't do with this. So like I said, it is limited because it is up to 2021. That's the data that they gathered. So that means that any kind of convention library or changes syntax, whatever, that was created after 2021 um, won't be appearing on ChatGPT. Now, is that really that bad? Well, kinda, because you guys might know the web dev world changes really fast. So like, for example, Next.js launched Next13 after ChatGPT um, got released. So basically, if you ask anything related to Next.js, it might be outdated, right? So that's definitely something that um, ChatGPT is lacking. Now, what else? Uh, it might be wrong sometimes. I've, I've definitely dealt with situations where it was wrong, like straight up giving me wrong code or something like that, and I noticed. Uh, but if you correct it, <laughs> the bot will be pretty nice. They will admit to it its error and it will actually learn from this. So maybe that's that's a benefit. But um, it's important to always fact check what you get from ChatGPT. Also, sometimes it might just get confused, right? It's not a, it's not a person. Uh, it also doesn't read your mind, although it does infer a lot of stuff really right. So like it's very accurate with that. I still think there's a lot of room to improve and it will improve in the future. But I think no matter what, no matter how bad some parts of it is, this is a really, really interesting thing that will definitely set us up for a lot of changes in the future in the programming industry. That's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really wanted to thank Scribe for sponsoring this video. Um, keep in mind, I'm going to be posting twice a week and I would be massively appreciated if you would like this video and comment what you want to see next. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.